Since launching my React course, I'm getting a bunch of questions asking, why would you use React within Webflow? And there's a lesson inside of the course that will go deeper into this, but ultimately there's a, there's a few applications. First of all, just to get it completely out of the way, Webflow, as I've said time and time again, is a marketing website builder. Marketing websites need to perform well on SEO and React does not perform well on SEO. So what you can garner from that is you should not be building an entire marketing website inside of React. The reason for this is because the page loads completely empty and that is exactly what spiders see. So marketing websites completely out the question. You may end up with a component written in React on your marketing website, okay? This could be a filtering system. Um, this could be anything for that matter. It could be a fun game, but you need to make the decision whether the content within that React component is necessary for SEO purposes. So you need to then decide whether React is the right tool. I think the course will, will take you kind of through that. The next layer on top of that is for web applications. If you're gonna build a web application we're inside of Webflow, then React, really, if you're not gonna use WISD or something like that, which I do think it has its own um, problems, React is gonna uh, have those um, a lot of those similar problems from a security aspect, but you might have a lot more control than WISD does. Okay, you need to make that decision. So now we've got to start to bridge into the world of the skills learning React enables you to do. Okay, and this is what my course is kind of preparing you for more so than teaching you to use React inside of Webflow. Now, obviously, the obvious one here is learning JavaScript. You're gonna learn a lot of quirks of JavaScript you don't often get just by writing raw JavaScript. Um, object deconstructing, um, the way that you state works and you've, you um, array deconstructing, I think that that's what it's called, um, event callback, performance, things like this that are very, very important to React teach you about JavaScript. And advice specifically for DevLink, which if you don't know, it allows you to access the components you've built inside of Webflow inside as a as a react component and consume that inside of a project we're going to go into that and i'm going to tell you in depth about my thoughts and my uh, suggestions when building out a dev link project so this is in aid of that but the quickest way to get to that is obviously through building it in inside of a webflow project i want to get you up and running and building stuff as quickly as possible before bogging you down with all of the do's and don'ts of building a react project which is why we, we play around with react we get something working and then this bombshell is going to kind of drop about the do's and don'ts of react okay uh, the idea is that you do follow the entire course before actually applying this to any kind of client project or, or whatever so all that to be said, the usage of React directly inside of Webflow is needs to be very carefully uh, taken on board. Is it SEO compliant? If so, then do not use React in, in whether it's a small chunk of the website, whether it's the entire website. Use React to build out website applications and to further your knowledge about R React specifically, to uh, use DevLink more effectively and to enhance your understanding of JavaScript. That's the whole point in this course. That's that's why I'm doing this. And in the end, I hope it just makes you more curious about development, more curious about practices, and overall a better Webflow designer. I hope this helps. Like, subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, happy no coding. Oh, and my Patreon link to the course is in the description. Hope to see you there.